Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Kajal Jindal from University of Delhi. Today, we are going to discuss about the module Harmonic Oscillator in Schrodinger Picture 1 from Paper Quantum Mechanics. So students, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. We will learn to solve the second order differential equation for a linear harmonic oscillator. We will learn how to obtain the differential equation for Hermite polynomials. We will got, get to know the properties of generating functions of Hermite polynomials. We will learn some important properties of stationary states of harmonic oscillator. Finally, we will get to know the correspondence of quantum mechanical oscillator with classical theory. We begin with the parabolic potential of linear harmonic oscillator. We are all familiar with the one dimensional motion of a particle of mass m which is attached to a fixed center by a force proportional to the displacement from the center and where the restoring force is given by F is equal to minus Kx, which is the well-known Hooke's law, where K is the force constant. The potential energy corresponding to this force is then given by V of X is equal to 1 by 2 Kx square, which is plotted versus X as shown in the figure. Such a parabolic potential is found to be of great importance not only in quantum mechanics but in classical physics as well. Now, we discuss the importance of linear harmonic oscillator. It can be used to approximate a given arbitrary potential W of x in the vicinity of a stable equilibrium position at say x is equal to a. For instance, if we expand W of x in Taylor series about x is equal to a, we get W of x is equal to W of a plus x minus a times W prime of a plus 1 by 2 x minus a whole square W double prime of a plus so on where W prime of a is equal to dw of x by dx at point x is equal to a and w double prime of a is equal to d2w of x by dx square at point x is equal to a. Since w of x has a minimum at x is equal to a, so w prime of a is equal to 0 and w double prime of a is greater than 0. If we choose a as the origin of coordinates, and W of A as the origin of the energy scale, we see that harmonic oscillator potential given in equation 1 with K is equal to W prime of A is in fact the first approximation to W of X. Thus, linear harmonic oscillator serves an ideal example to study systems in which there exist small vibrations about a point of stable equilibrium as for instance in the case of vibrational motion of nuclei in molecules. Classically, the dynamical equation which governs the motion of a harmonic oscillator is given by m times d2x by dt square is equal to minus dv by dx is equal to minus kx and the solution of this equation is given by x is equal to a times cos omega t minus pi where a denotes the amplitude and omega is the angular frequency of the vibrating particle. The kinetic energy of this particle is given by k which is equal to 1 by 2 times m into dx by dt square. So, k is equal to p square by 2m. The total energy is the summation of kinetic energy plus potential energy. So, E is equal to p square by 2m 
plus 1 by 2 into m into omega square into x square. Quantum mechanically, in Schrodinger picture, we start the solution of linear harmonic oscillator for which the Hamiltonian is given by Hamiltonian H is equal to operator P square by 2M plus 1 by 2K times position operator X square. Momentum operator and position operator are independent of time and in the coordinate representation we can write the momentum operator P is equal to minus iota H cut D by DX and the position operator X is equal to X so that Hamiltonian operator H can be expressed as minus H cut square by 2M d2 by dx2 plus 1 by 2 kx square. The time dependent Schrodinger equation is given by iota times h cut del psi of xt by del t is equal to within the brackets minus h cut square by 2m d2 by dx square plus 1 by 2 kx square into brackets close psi of xt. Since operator H is independent of time, so psi of xt can be written as psi of xt is equal to exponent of minus iota by H cut into Hamiltonian operator into T into U of x with the Hamiltonian operator acting on un of x is equal to en un of x. That is minus h cut square by 2m into d2 by dx square plus 1 by 2kx square within the brackets into un of x is equal to en into un of x. This is the time independent Schrodinger equation for the linear harmonic oscillator which is an eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian. The stage of the oscillator with the permitted values of the energy En is represented by the state vector which is the wave function un of x. Thus, the problem of determining the En and un of x is reduced to solving the differential equation 7. This equation can be rewritten in the simpler form where we can write d2u by d, d rho square plus lambda minus rho square into u is equal to 0 by changing over to the independent variable rho defined as we have rho is equal to alpha x with alpha equals m into k by h cut square raised to power 1 by 4 which can be expressed in terms of omega as m omega by h cut raised to power 1 by 2 and we have lambda is equal to 2m en divided by h cut square alpha square which is equal to 2 times en by h cut omega or we have en is equal to 1 by 2 lambda into h cut omega. Now to find out the solution of equation 10 which do not diverge at infinity, it can be checked that when lambda is equal to 1, u of rho is equal to exponential of minus rho square by 2 solution. Note the second solution which is exponential rho square by 2 is ruled out because it diverges at infinity. It is therefore reasonable to expect that the dominant asymptotic behavior of u of rho would be of the same type even for other values of lambda too. This is because the constant lambda would be insignificant compared to rho at large values of rho approaching infinity. To incorporate this asymptotic behavior, we therefore write u of rho as u of rho is equal to exponential of minus 1 by 2 into rho square into nu of rho 
and we substitute this in equation 10 which reduces to new double prime minus true rho into new prime plus lambda minus 1 into new is equal to 0 where prime denotes differentiation with respect to rho. Now it is a simple mathematical exercise to verify by solving this equation through the series solution that for large rho the infinite series would diverge. This infinite series would however terminate only when lambda minus 1 is an even integer that is 2 times n. Thus the solution of equation 14 for lambda is equal to 2n plus 1 is a polynomial of degree n. We next discuss the energy eigenfunctions, the series solution and the asymptotic behavior. Let us verify the above statements by actually solving equation 14 by the series method. We suppose that nu of rho is equal to c sigma into rho raised to power sigma plus c sigma plus 1 into rho raised to power sigma plus 1 plus so on which is equal to summation over s going from sigma to infinity cs into rho raised to power s. On substituting the series in equation 14 we have summation over s going from sigma to infinity cs into within the square brackets s into s minus 1 into rho raised to power s minus 2 minus 2 into s into rho raised to power s plus lambda minus 1 into rho raised to power s brackets close is equal to 0. Since the series on the left hand side is to vanish for all rho, the coefficient of each power of rho must vanish separately. Taking the coefficient of rho raised to power s for any s greater than or equal to sigma, we obtain c s plus 2 into s plus 2 into s plus 1 minus c s into within the square brackets 2s minus within the brackets lambda minus 1 square brackets close is equal to 0 or I can rearrange the equation to obtain the ratio of cs plus 2 to cs is equal to 2s minus within the brackets lambda minus 1 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2. Now the asymptotic behavior of a function defined by an infinite series is determined by how fast the coefficient cs decrease as s tends to infinity. From equation 17, we find that as s tends to infinity, cs plus 2 by cs tends to 2 by s. Now we discuss the behavior of the coefficients in the series. This behavior of the coefficients is exactly the same as in the series for exponential of rho square. Hence, it is clear that for large rho, the function nu of rho behaves like exponential of rho square, thereby confirming our above assertion. However, the situation is different if the series terminates after a finite number of terms. This is what happens in our case if lambda minus 1 is an even integer that is 2 times n and coefficient cn plus 1 is equal to 0 and cn is not equal to 0. For if lambda is equal to 2n plus 1, the numerator in equation 17 vanishes for s is equal to n, making all cn plus 2 and hence cn plus 4, cn plus 6 and the further terms 0. Further, with cn plus 1 equal to 0, cn plus 3, cn plus 5 all vanish according to equation 17. In fact, by using equation 17 as cs minus 2 divided by cs is equal to s into s minus 1 divided by 
2s minus 2n minus 4, we see that cn minus 1, cn minus 3 and the further terms also vanish. The same relation can be used to determine the same relation can be used to determine non-vanishing coefficients that are cn minus 2, cn minus 4 and so on in terms of cn. Because of the factor s into s minus 1 in the numerator of this relation, the last of the non-zero coefficients is c0 or c1 depending on whether n is even or odd. Thus, the solution of equation 14 for lambda equals 2n plus 1 is a polynomial of degree n. Thus, the infinite series resulting in the form of a polynomial is crucial for resulting the discrete energy levels as we shall see. For lambda equals 2n plus 1, the polynomial is nothing but the Hermite polynomial. In fact, equation 14 reduces to that satisfied by the Hermite polynomial which is hn of rho with hn of rho double prime minus 2 times rho into hn prime rho plus 2n hn of rho is equal to 0. We thus finally arrive at the result that the energy eigenfunctions of the harmonic oscillator are given by un of x is equal to nn into exponential minus rho square by 2 into hn of rho which is equal to nn into exponential of minus alpha square x square by 2 into hn of alpha x with n equals 0, 1, 2 and so on where nn is the normalization constant are given by un of x is equal to nn into exponential minus rho square by 2 into hn of rho. This is equal to nn into exponential of minus alpha square into x square by 2 into hn of alpha x with n is equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on where nn is the normalization constant. This normalization is determined by using the orthonormal property of Hermite polynomials that is the integral going from minus infinity to infinity hm of rho into hn of rho into exponent minus rho square into d rho is equal to square root of pi into 2 raised to power n into n factorial into delta mn. This determines the normalization constant to be nn is equal to alpha by square root of pi into 2 raised to power n into n factorial. Next we discuss the generating function of Hermite polynomials. While studying the properties of Hermite polynomials in the context of ordinary differential equations in the undergraduate course, you must have studied its generating function which is defined as g of rho xi is equal to summation over n going from 0 to infinity 1 by n factorial into hn of rho into xi raised to power n. This is equal to exponential minus xi square plus 2 rho xi. The parameter xi here is a parameter that takes real arbitrary values. The Hermite polynomial hn of rho is the coefficient of xi raised to power n by n factorial in the expansion of exponent minus xi square plus 2 rho xi in parts of xi. For the purpose of illustration, we record here the expressions for the first four polynomials given as h0 of rho is equal to 1, h1 of rho is equal to twice of rho, h2 of rho is equal to 4 times rho square minus 2, h3 of rho is equal to 8 times rho cube minus 12 rho. 
It is interesting to observe here that thermic polynomials for even n are even in parts of rho. The polynomials of odd n have odd parts of rho. Let us see how the orthonormality relation that is equation 22 of Hermite polynomials can be proved by using the generating function defined in equation 24. Consider the integral. Integral going from minus infinity to infinity g of rho xi into g of rho xi prime into exponential of minus rho square d rho. Let us substitute the two alternate expressions given in equations 24a and 24b and equate the two sides. So we get summation over m and summation over n xi raised to power m by m factorial into xi raised to power n by n factorial into integral going from minus infinity to infinity hm of rho into hn of rho d rho is equal to integral going from minus infinity to infinity exponential of minus rho square plus 2 rho into xi plus xi prime minus xi square minus xi prime square d rho. The right hand side of this equation reduces to exponential of 2 xi xi prime into the integral going from minus infinity to infinity exponential of minus within the brackets square of rho minus xi minus xi prime brackets close d rho is equal to square root of pi into exponential of 2 xi xi prime this is equal to square root of pi into summation over n going from 0 to infinity 2 xi xi prime raised to power n by n factorial this gives square root of pi into summation m going from 0 to infinity, summation n going from 0 to infinity, 2 raised to power n into xi raised to power m into xi prime raised to power n by n factorial into delta mn. We now compare the two sides to equate the coefficients on both sides and we get the relation which equation 22 which is written above. With the help of this relation, it is a simple matter to show that the energy eigenfunctions given by equation 21 form an orthonormal set. That is, the integral over um star of x into un of x dx is equal to delta mn. In fact, the property of orthogonality of um and un is a necessary consequence of the fact that there are eigenfunctions belonging to distinct eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian operator which is self-adjoint. One may also find it useful to calculate the matrix elements of x and x square, namely the integral going from minus infinity to infinity, um star of x, x un of x dx. This is equal to square root of n plus 1 divided by square root of 2 into alpha for m equals n plus 1. Whereas for m equals n minus 1, the integral equals square root of n divided by square root of 2 into alpha. The integral is 0 otherwise. This result is proved by starting with integral g star of rho xi into rho into g rho xi into exponential minus rho square into d rho and evaluating the integral hm of rho into rho into hn of rho into exponential minus rho square d rho and proceeding exactly in the same fashion as was done before. Similarly, one can find um x square un is equal to integral going from minus infinity to infinity un star of x into x square into un of x is equal to 2n plus 1 by 2 alpha square. Next, we discuss the properties of stationary states. Let us summarize 
the results we have obtained above. First, the energy eigenvalues are positive. As long as the potential V of x, the energy eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian given by equation 5 are greater than the minimum value. Choosing as the origin V0 is equal to 0, the energy eigenvalues are thus positive. In fact, the stationary states of the simple harmonic oscillator are characterized by equally spaced energy levels. The figure shows the potential and the energy levels of the linear harmonic oscillator. We next discuss the Gaussian form of the state and zero point energy. The lowest energy, which is E0 is equal to h cut omega by 2, is called the zero point energy. It is not zero due to the fact that the particle is confined to a finite region of space and therefore by the uncertainty relation its momentum cannot be zero and hence the energy cannot vanish in any state. Actually the wave function of the lowest energy state which is ground state has the Gaussian form u0 of x is equal to alpha square by pi raised to power 1 by 4 into exponential minus alpha square x square by 2. We have already seen that the ground state of the harmonic oscillator is a minimum uncertainty state where the product delta p into delta x has the minimum value which is h cut by 2. Third point. Since the potential V of x is equal to kx square is an even function in x, so we have V of minus x is equal to V of x. Thus, the eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian h have a definite parity. Moreover, in the case of a one-dimensional harmonic oscillator, since the energy eigenvalues of h are non-degenerate, the wave functions associated with the stationary states are either even or odd. The operation which transforms x to minus x is referred to as the parity operation and the behavior of the function under parity operation determines the parity of the function. In one of the subsequent modules, we shall be discussing the properties of parity operator in more details. Figure 3 shows a few of the eigenfunctions. The figure A gives a plot of the eigenfunctions for even values of n, that is, n takes up the value 0, 2, 4, 6. Clearly, the states with even n have even parity because under the operation of x equal to minus x, the functions remain symmetric. Figure B shows the plot of the eigenfunctions for odd values of n, that is, n equals to 1, 3, 5, which under parity operation are odd. Next, we discuss the correspondence with classical theory. A plot of position probability density versus rho is equal to alpha x for large values of n, say n is equal to 10, depicts a feature which brings the behavior of quantum mechanical oscillator closer to the classical case in accordance with Bohr's correspondence principle. It may also be noted that the number of zeros of which are called the nodes are even or odd as n is even or odd. Indeed, the ground state has no node excluding the zero at infinity. Thus, the number of zeros is exactly equal to n. The figure compares the density of a classical oscillator of total energy which is represented by the dash curve. It is clear that the agreement is reasonably good. It can improve rapidly with increasing values of small n. So students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module, we started to solve the differential equation for a linear harmonic oscillator. We have learned to obtain the differential equation for Hermite polynomials. 
we know the properties of generating function of Hermite polynomials. We have learned some important properties of stationary states of harmonic oscillator. Finally, we know the correspondence of quantum mechanical oscillator with classical theory. Thank you students for your attention.